Today I will be speaking about ESRI guidelines for war responders. Uh, Ten years ago, people were speaking about war responders and there were no consensus about what's the meaning of war responders. So after that, in 2014, there was a consensus and there was a, uh, what we call Bologna criteria for war ovarian response. People uh, think that women above 40 years old, women with previous poor ovarian response who produced less than three oocytes with conventional stimulation protocols, people, uh, women with abnormal ovarian test, uh, is literally speaking, antral follicle count less than five to seven or AMH less than 1.3 and later on th this criteria were modified to 1.1. Bologna criteria nowadays is used to classify a group of women that yields less oocytes after ovarian stimulation. But because there were some concerns that uh, bull responders are a heterogeneous group, there are many women who are included in this group but has different criteria. For example, in Bologna criteria, there were no difference between women who have normal ovarian reserve and then they had, they subsequently have less oocyte yield and those women who you predict from the start that they have poor ovarian response. So the, later on there was what we called uh, Bosidian criteria or what, uh, what's, uh, uh, what's had been introduced to the, classify this group of women. There were four Bosidian groups, group one, two, and three, and four. If a woman have an ovarian, uh, if a woman is less than 35 years old, so it may belong to group one or three. If a woman is above 35, then it's group three, uh, group two or four. So if a woman have good ovarian reserve and then she has IVF and then she produced a small number of oocytes, less than four oocytes, then she will belong to group one or two according to her age. And then if she has not had IVF yet, and then you do some uh, test to predict the response, like my colleague Sesh, uh, Sankara speak, has spoken about AMH and antral quality count, beside her age, then you can classify her according to group three or group four. Because uh, the issue uh, has been introduced last year to give some highlights about how to give stimulation, how to manage IVF uh, patients. And for particular, this group of patients, there was some specifications. For as regard controlled ovarian stimulation for bull responders, everybody is using either the antagonist or long agonist protocol in most cases. So with the antagonist protocol is much better than the long agonist for this group of patients? Actually, the answer is no, it's not. Uh, the, the ongoing pregnancy rate was the same between both of them and also the live birth rate was the same for both. So you, have to, you can use either the antagonist or the agonist because they are equally recommended for predicted bull responders. And to speak, uh, call back again what we said about Bosidian criteria. So predicted bull response, so we are speaking about group three or group four. Some people may think that short agonist protocol, protocol may be uh, better than antagonist protocol. And back to a meta-analysis and systematic review that was uh, produced, that was published by Zio et al. in 2013. They found no difference in ongoing pregnancy rate between the two groups. So there was no statistically difference rate in clinical pregnancy rate and hence antagonist and short agonist protocol are the same. After publishing this uh, systematic review, the uh, guideline producer uh, discovered two other uh, randomized trials that were published after that systematic review and the meta-analysis. One of them by Chimbrini uh, et al, who found, uh, who was uh, comparing the clinical pregnancy rate between the cycles with antagonists compared to those with short agonists. 
there was no significant difference in the number of oocytes. However, clinical pregnancy rate was significantly higher than the uh, higher uh, than with the short agonist protocol compared to the antagonist protocol. The other uh, randomized trial was done by our uh, speaker here, Sonkara et al. in 2014. But uh, because it, the primary outcome was not about uh, comparing live birth rate or ongoing pregnancy series, so it was about comparing uh, whether the uh, which protocol, long agonist or short agonist or antagonist protocol, produce more oocytes, and they found that the antagonists show higher pregnancy, higher ongoing pregnancy rate. But adding these two studies to the meta analysis by Zoe et al did not produce significant difference between antagonist and short agonist protocol. So what about the ultra short protocol or the microdose flare up protocol? Two randomized control trials were identified and they had 90 and 44 poor responders were recruited in these two trials and there was no difference in clinical pregnancy rate. So using antagonist or agonist protocol are equally the same. So what about the dose used? In a systematic review by Sarah Lance and in Cochrane, they, she tried to find out what's the optimal dose for stimulating women in conventional protocols, uh, whether 150, 300, 450, or 600. Actually, when they compared 150 to 300 or 450, there were no difference in pregnancy rates. However, women who received 300 international units had more oocyte than those who received 150. And because the number of uh, oocytes retrieved is nowadays considered an important outcome, uh, especially in this group of women with poor response, so they think that 300 international units is much better than 150. And uh, they compared 300 and international unit with 400 or 450, uh, 600. There were no difference. So they choose 300 international unit to be the standard and nobody should exceed it. Although they are questioning whether there is benefit as regards clinical pregnancy rate and ongoing pregnancy rate between halving this dose to 150, so 300 international units, nobody should exceed it. What about mild ovarian stimulation protocols? My colleague Sinkara has spoken about mild ovarian stimulation. In 2017, our group in Cochrane has published this uh, systematic review about oral medication, including clomiphene citrate or, or aromatase inhibitors with gonadotropins for controlled ovarian stimulation in women undergoing IVF. And then another meta-analysis and systematic review by my friend Willie Martins from Brazil, we're discussing the same matter. And we reached at the same conclusion together at the same year that clomiphene citrate alone or in combination with gonadotropins and gonadotropins alone are equally recommended for poor responders. And these are the recommendations by the ISHRI guidelines. To see from where this guideline recommendation came from, this is the only study comparing clomiphene citrate alone uh, compared to FSH in conventional cycles. And you can see that there was no difference in pregnancy rate between clomiphene citrate alone and uh, compared to the agonist FSH protocol. Pregnancy rate, where the relative risk of having pregnancy is 0.7 and the confidence in interval between 0.2 up to 2.2. So there is no difference. Uh, in cycles where you clomiphene citrate added to gonadotropins FSH and in modified cycle where you, uh, sorry, and uh, when you add antagonist to the cycle to control for LH rise, this is compared to short agonists. There were three randomized trials and the, the aggregation of them together in a forest plot showed that there is no difference between pregnancy rate. If you use this protocol uh, compared to the short agonist protocol. 
Another RCT that was not included in the meta-analysis uh, that was published in 2016 showed the lower clinical pregnancy rate with clomiphene citrate protocols compared to no clinical to, to compared to no clomiphene citrate. Mm -hmm. However, this trial was not added in the meta-analysis, but I tried to add it and there was no difference till now. What about letrozole or aromatase inhibitor? This is the meta-analysis by Abish Joe et al. in 2017, the group was Wellington Martin, and it showed no difference between protocols where letrozole is added uh, to stimulation compared to other protocols. However, the recommendation by the ASHRI was the addition of letrozole to gonadotropins in stimulation protocol is probably not recommended for predicted poor responders. And they give the justification for this because in the trials where letrozole is used in IVF, letrozole uh, addition of letrozole to FSH in a GNRH antagonist protocol did not improve the efficacy of ovarian stimulation. There is no studies comparing letrozole alone compared to gonadotropins in IVF. And again, as she said, letrozole is off label for ovarian stimulation and safety concerns have been raised regarding possible keratogenicity. So although letrozole might be effective or as effective as conventional agonist protocols, it is not being recommended for poor responders. What about modified natural cycle versus microdose uh, agonist flare protocol? The use of modified natural cycle is probably not recommended over conventional protocols. And this recommendation came from one RCT that compared 125 poor responders women, and there was no significant difference in pregnancy rate. It was 6%, 6.1 uh, versus 6.9. Uh, what's about the new uh, stimulation protocol called U stimulation or double stimulation in poor responders? The ASHRAE guidelines acknowledge that this protocol should only be used in the context of clinical research. Actually, this is a promising protocol for producing more oocyte within the same cycle. And we do have two prospective trials and five retrospective studies that report increasing the number of oocytes with use stimulation. There was comparable pregnancy rate from all sites uh, obtained in the follicular phase and in the luteal phase. However, there are no RCTs comparing this double stimulation with the two conventional stimulation. So we need to wait a little bit and this dual stimulation should only be used in the context of clinical research. One of the considered side effects or the disadvantage of this protocol is the mandatory freeze all of oocytes or embryos. And for this, pro uh, for this group of patients where you have very little amount of very little number of oocytes subjecting embryos to freezing, one or two embryos produced, so many people would question this. Now, I will not go through uh, pretreatment uh, uh, medications in the, and their effect on IVF outcomes in poor responders because the evidence is like Dr. Adil Shafi uh, was speaking, adding combined con uh, bells is not recommended in, the G, uh, in GNRH antagonist protocols because of reduced efficacy. As Professor Adil said, in the general population, it leads to decrease in the uh, uh, live birth rate. Also in poor responders, it leads to a reduction in the live birth rate. So in poor responders, do not use the combined bills before stimulation. What about using GNRH antagonist? Uh, using the GNRH antagonist before ovarian stimulation in a delayed start gonadotropin protocol is probably also not recommended. And because, and uh, as you can see, the live birth rate, clinical pregnancy rate, and the clinical uh, pregnancy rate in this uh, three RCTs show very low quality of evidence and there was no difference in pregnancy rate. So the recommendation is not to using them. So now we came to that juvenile use in IVF for poor responders. 
these are substances that the, uh, you use during stimulation and you think that it may increase the uh, live birth rate. What about growth hormone? Using growth hormone before or during ovarian stimulation is probably not recommended for poor respondents. This is the recommendation, okay? And this, it is a conditional recommendation. However, meta-analysis of nine RCTs have shown a proven evidence of significant increase in pregnancy rate, or I'm sorry, in live birth rate upon using growth hormone. The increase in live birth rate may be between two 25% increase and up to two folds and a half increase. So yes, growth hormone might lead to an increase in live birth rate. However, you have, we have to be cautious in this, and this is what the board and history guidelines have adopted. Because most of these RCTs are being conducted before 2011, where there is no consensus on what's the meaning of uh, poor responders, and everybody was using his own poor, respond, uh, poor responder definition. So, uh, despite a possible beneficial effect of, poor of uh, growth hormone on, uh, poor, in poor responders on live birth rate, the evidence is of too limited quality to recommend its use nowadays. So again, it might be, a, 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 it might be an uh, item for research and it might prove to be effective in later years. And the uh, authors of, our, of the guidelines has addressed that studies were underpowered and definition was uh, poor response varies the, and was heterogeneous among studies. So let's wait and see, but growth hormone might be uh, a good adjuvant later on. So what about DEHIA or dihydrobiandrosterone acetate? Again, like uh, growth hormone, the use of DEA is not recommended. Although, uh, live birth rate, as shown by a meta-analysis of eight RCTs, might be improved upon using DEA. But the recommendation is it shouldn't be used now because they have a lot of concerns about the studies. They have a lot of concerns about how many months should be dehydropian uh, dehia used before the IVF cycle and the studies show a great heterogeneity so the recommendation is to wait although it might be used later on. What about testosterone? Uh, use of testosterone is probably also not recommended like dehydropian dehydropian Although many studies have shown that it might work, nowadays uh, there is uh, a larger study using transdermal testosterone batches, okay, and we are waiting for the results of it. But currently, use of testosterone is not recommended. What about using aspirin before or during ovarian stimulation? It is not recommended. It doesn't lead to any increase. As you can see, the relative risk is crossing one, so it might lead to harm, it might lead to increase in live birth rate, so there is no significant difference of using it. So don't use it. As a conclusion, in poor responders, you can use the antagonist and the agonist, they are both if, uh, equally effective. Clomiphene citrate alone or in combination with gonadotropins alone are equally recommended. The addition of litrazole to gonadotropins in stimulation protocol is not recommended. It's unclear whether a higher gonadotropins rather than 150 is needed for predicted bull response, but we, a gonadotropin dose of 300 is not recommended, uh, higher than 300 is not recommended, so you use 150 up to 300. The use of modified natural cycle is probably not recommended over conventional stimulation protocol. Dual stimulation is promising but should not be used outside the context of research. The use of adjuvant growth hormone and or, uh, before or during ovarian stimulation is probably not recommended nowadays. Again, it needs uh, more research. This is the same for uh, dihydrobiandosterone, dehia and testosterone. The use of aspirin should be prohibited. Use of sildenafil or Viagra should be prohibited. Use of endomethacine should be prohibited. Finally, thank you very much for, for listening to me.